Now I'm uh, happy to talk to my guest uh, on today's program. Now, Fred Lundgren uh, is the uh, CEO and uh, owner of KCAA, KCAA AM 1050, KCAA Radio.com, uh, and uh, oh, the call in number 888 909 1050. So, uh, a couple of months ago, I was a guest on another program here on KCAA, the Vince Daniel Show. It was a Saturday, and I was debating a cattleman. Uh, and it was a very heated discussion, and the hotline rang, and it was, it's, it's the owner of the station. The owner is calling. He never calls during a show. So I thought, well, okay, it's the owner calling to say, get that vegan off the air. We can't have a vegan on, on, on our radio station here. He'll, he'll offend everyone. <laughs> um, and it turned out to be Fred Lundgren. Uh, and we had a very interesting discussion with some very interesting results. How are you today, Fred? Just fine. And first of all, welcome to the KCAA family of broadcasters. And uh, I'm very happy to be your first guest. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, and uh, it really is uh you know, we we have an amazing story here in the sense. Of, you know, when you called in, I thought, oh, you know, you were you were calling in to chase me off the air. But I really felt that day that you made a connection with your love for animals from childhood. You you mentioned something about the 4-H club and its uh, indoctrination uh, of of children into a certain um, attitude about animals. You well, it, it's supposed to teach us to use animals as a product. It's just designed to do that. And it's done quite well, but uh, it had an opposite effect on me. I was actually uh, president of our 4-H club and an officer in FFA, and uh, I got a Lone Star Farmer degree, uh, you know, in animal science. So I've been there and done that and raised animals for a living. Uh, my son and I farm, but no longer farm animals. And uh, all our fences have been taken up on all of our farms. Mm-hmm. So, right. yeah, in, I, 19, I in, in 1965, I raised the champion steer at the Austin Livestock Show. And when I was leading that steer uh, up the ramp to the trailer where it was going to go to slaughter, uh, it was hesitant, but I convinced it to do so. I took the halter off of it. It walked up into the trailer, and then when it got inside the trailer, it turned around and bellered at me. And that was the moment that I realized what I was doing. Mm. And that was the moment when you talked about that brought us all to tears on uh, on the show a, a few months ago. Um, and, uh, right, you, you say 4-H teaches us to, to use animals. Oh, and by the way, so uh, you, uh, I shouldn't give it away that, uh, well, well, we'll get to the vegan part of the story with you in a second. But um, in terms of, of language... Uh, I, you know, what we'll discuss on the show in, in weeks to come is, is what, what I think of as we call speciesist language um, that also commodifies animals. So, um, so generally, I, I call animals he or she, not it. You know, we have we have a, a lot built into our language that uh, you know, it's all some crazy expressions like you know, oh. Well, well, that way we'll kill two birds with one stone, you know. Well, who wants to kill? Well, I don't want to kill any birds. You know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm not interested in skinning cats, you know. I'm, I'm interested in um, people recognizing animals for the, for the beings that they are, uh, that they have emotions, that they have feelings, and, uh, and we, we shouldn't make them into pro- – we shouldn't use them. We shouldn't exploit them at all. And uh, and so you've remembered that all the all, all your life when when the steer turned around and looked at you, right? Yes, so. and I'm 64 years old, and it still bothers me today. Ah, that's because it was an awakening for me. Right, right, right. But um, our, our society is so entrenched in, in meat, dairy, fish, and eggs that it never occurred to you really to to stop eating animals. Um, and then. After our discussion on air, we stayed in touch for a little bit. We expressed an interest in having uh, my program come on to uh, KCAA. And uh, in one conversation, though, you, uh, you informed me that, that you had some, uh, some health and weight problems. Well, not just weight problems, morbidly obese uh, from too much time at a computer and too little time on the tractor and on the land and too long in the city. Uh, 
and too much stress. I um, um, had a horrible heart episode, a silent heart attack right after Thanksgiving. And I was told by the doctor that I needed to be stented. They attempted to stent me. It failed. Then uh, I was told I was scheduled for open heart surgery. I got a second opinion at the DeBakey Clinic, and they told me I was not even a candidate for that. Mm. So like Bill Clinton, I hit the wall. I had nowhere to go. And mm. that's when and, your and introduction... And you said morbidly about, obese. What, what, uh, what, at what weight were you? 327. 327 pounds. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And, and you had no place to go. Um, I'd hit the wall. I was it. That was it. Just like Bill Clinton said, he hit the wall. I had no alternatives. My, my front uh, artery uh, that comes down and, and forks out to the left, the uh, descending artery in the front of my heart, half of it had calcified and gone away completely, the part to the left, right side of the fork. The left side of the fork was 99.9% .9 blocked, and the reason I'm alive is because my heart has been uh, revasculating on its own enough to make up the difference, and I think the reason that I've survived this long is that I've probably taken a five-gallon bucket of aspirin in my life, two, four aspirins, six aspirins every day, and I did it to keep myself feeling good. Little did I know that my my heart was uh, 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 was suffering the whole time, and that was why I had such fatigue uh, and, and felt so bad for so long. Doctors said I probably have had heart disease since my mid-40s. As I think back, I probably had my first heart attack in 1996, but I didn't recognize it. And, you know, we're, we're seeing heart disease uh, in, in children now. We're, we're seeing signs that at age five and six, and, and the kind of uh, morbid obesity about which you speak, uh, look at a lot of the children coming out of, uh, you know, McDevils and Murder King, Wendy's and Kills Jr., Up Chuck E. Cheese, all, all of these places, uh, really uh, very da dangerous zones for children. Um, I think we have to take a break, so uh, we will find out, uh, you know, you were up against the wall, nothing to do. You were so desperate that you had to do... Well, we'll talk about it after the break. It's Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. GoVeganRadio.com, the website. Uh, and uh, follow me on Twitter, Go Vegan Radio, Bob Linden on Facebook. We'll continue with uh, KCAA CEO and, and uh, owner, Fred Lundgren, coming up on Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. It's Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. GoVeganRadio.com coming to you live today on KCAA Radio in the Inland Empire in Southern California, live from Viva La Vegan Grocery, the world's largest vegan grocery store, is in the Inland Empire in Rancho Cucamonga, 9456 Roberts Street, R-O-B-E-R-D-S, uh, and uh, Happy Father's Day, it's uh, today, we're a family value show, we want to, uh, we want we value Dad's health. We value him. We want him around uh, as long as possible. I, I, as I mentioned earlier, my father died at the age of 47 when I was 13. And uh, I wish there were a vegan show around way back then to uh, let us in on the truth. Looking at how many, you know, everybody's firing, firing up the grill today and, you know, having a Father's Day barbecue, which is basically saying, here, Dad, have a plate of cancer. Have a plate of heart disease. And just looking at the... the the options that are here. I'm seeing burgers I've never seen before, vegan burgers here at Viva La Vegan. This Soul Cuisine Mushroom Rice Burger looks really good. I'll have to check that out. And uh, I see uh, from uh, Food for Life, the uh, Mufri uh, Vegan Vegetarian Burgers. A lot of great stuff here. The, uh, the Zen Patties are delicious from Eco Vegan, Sunshine Burgers. Uh, just... Uh, Come on down. If you're in the Inland Empire, come down and say hi today. We're doing the show live here. And uh, we're on the phone with Fred Lundgren, uh, who is the CEO and owner of KCAA. Happy Father's Day, Fred. You're a father, correct? Yes, yes I am. I've gotten three calls so far today, and I'm hoping for more. Yes, okay. And many, many more Happy Father's Days to you. Uh, and uh, before the break, we were discussing how we, we met on the air, and uh, I learned uh, that you were in, uh, had serious heart problems. You were 327 pounds. You didn't know what to do. You were so desperate 
that you listen to the advice of a vegan talk show host. Is that correct? Well, that is correct. For for years, of course, for most, well, for all my life, I have uh, ignored that episode of my youth when I actually uh, saw the animal respond to me in a knowing way. And like most people, we just block it out. We eat our barbecue, we eat our hamburgers, we uh, eat our steaks. And as a matter of fact, I was born and raised in what's known as the sausage capital of Texas, uh, Elgin, uh, and they have three sausage factories there. So you can imagine how much beef I've eaten in my life. Right. So and it's interesting I had literally, too. I mean, we're I was talking out about health issues, Fred. But again, uh, the connection. We all love animals as children. You were in the 4-H club, and you you were devastated what happened to to what happened with a a prize steer. And I don't think many of us could do the dirty job. You know, we pay somebody behind uh, uh, behind the walls of a slaughterhouse with no windows at the slaughterhouse. Uh, none of us could go up and really stab a chicken or a cow or a pig and uh you know so we'd all be vegan if we had to do that but uh i had i had to slaughter one calf in my life uh because it um uh, it got away from me um uh, and and jumped out of a trailer trying to escape and it was just about dead when i caught up with it we had to take it to an abattoir and there was no one there except me and one of my friends who worked day shift at the abattoir and I had to slaughter that animal one time in my life, and I will never do that again. Mm-hmm. Well, you won't have to because, uh, uh, well, you're vegan now. <laughs> well, and, and again, I became a vegan because I didn't have a choice. And um, I'm so grateful that I have discovered uh, uh, you and your uh, uh, all of your efforts through the radio station. I had nowhere to go. I had no options. Uh, you know, I did not become a vegan necessarily uh, because of the animals, although my love for animals uh, is very clear. But you block those things out. The normal human being looks at the hamburger as something to eat, not as something that was alive and had feelings. You know, okay, so, so, so you know, we, the hamburger we block was that someone, out. really not something, but someone, but we do block and, that out. Sure. And that's what we do all our lives. And but but when I became a vegan, something changed, not only in my metabolism but in my way of thinking, because about a month ago, my wife and daughter ordered a steak. Of course, and I ate broccoli and beans and peas and everything vegan for the evening. And but in the middle of the night, I thought, you know, I wonder if uh, they had some steak left over, had it in a plastic bag, and I said, I wonder how that would taste. I went to the refrigerator, I looked in it in the refrigerator, and that steak looked like dead flesh to me. It did not look like a steak. And I says, my God, I need to call Bob and tell him. <laughs> because my, and my, It looked like dead flesh because it is dead flesh. It's a decomposing body. We're, we're eating animal sacrifice, the remains of animal sacrifice. Like, let's really look at what it is. But it's so hidden from us, even from the earliest age of childhood, because it's all endorsed by uh, the clown, the playground, the toys. Uh, you know, it's all, it's all just so hidden as to the fact that uh, there's someone on your plate. You know, so, um, and, and how long, tell the audience how long ago this, uh, this happened that we well, discussed the, I, um, I suppose it was about three months ago now uh, mm-hmm. that you were on the Vince Daniels show, and I was listening and called in. And from that, you introduced me to Dr. Esselstyn. And then Dr. Esselstyn called me and has counseled with me and has got me on the right track. I've ordered his tapes. I've ordered his uh, um, uh uh, books and uh, recipes, and I'm uh, uh, actually, uh, with the help of my daughter, uh, am losing weight quite fast with her wonderful, wonderful cooking, vegan cooking. And mm-hmm. I've discovered that you can eat a, a hamburger uh, that uh, does, doesn't have any beef or animal products in it, and it's great tasting, and you can hardly tell the difference in the regular beef burger. I did not know that was possible, but it is. <laughs> Oh, that's that's great. And you know, when I went vegan, none of this really was around. That was 28 years ago when I went vegan. So when I first heard that there was something called tofu, you know, massive celebration. But here I am sitting in the world's largest vegan grocery store in Rancho Cucamonga, Viva La Vegan, 9456 Roberts Street, if you want to come over today. 
thousands of items, and, and everything's vegan here. So, so tell us about now. So you're vegan for a couple of months, two or three months now. About, that- about three months, and uh, I've dropped down from three twenty-seven to two hundred and seventy. Three twenty-seven to two seventy. Yes, and my cholesterol went from uh, the mid twos down to one sixty-two the last time I checked it. I mean, your cholesterol drops instantly uh, when you go vegan. It, I was, it, it took like two or three weeks, and the drop was just dramatic. Now, I hit a plateau at 300 pounds, and then I stayed there about a week, and then just bam, down to 280, and now down to 270, and I've hit a little plateau here. Uh, I'm actually losing weight a little bit too fast, and frankly, I'm not out of the woods yet. You know, a word of caution, you know, if you're a meat eater and if you have a sedentary lifestyle, you can almost feel no symptoms of heart disease until you have a 70% blockage, and that's why it's a silent killer. I'm far from out of the woods. Dr. Esselson said it's a three- to four-year process to try to reverse my heart uh, blockages, if it's at all possible. Now, the, the Bacon Clinic said that they, under conventional medicine, can only reduce by 6% the blockage of the heart. Esselstyn has, has absolutely turned it around with a, with a radical vegan diet uh, to have someone who is on death's door go back to full functioning hearts. And that is a fact. It's medical science proven. But the conventional science is reduce it by 6%, stay on statin drugs, and uh, you may live a few more years, maybe not. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it actually, uh, the, the vegan diet isn't what's extreme. It's the diet of, uh, of flesh and, and mammary secretions and eggs and fish that uh, I think are, are really extreme. Um, you're, you're hearing some inc- life-saving information here today on Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. Um, and by the way, we have to buy airtime. We want to be on as many stations as possible with a vegan message. Uh, so we'd like you to make a tax-deductible donation at GoVeganRadio.com. And if you uh, donate $100 or more, uh, I will send you uh, this important book. It's from Dr. John McDougall. It's called The Starch Solution, Many Recipes, Dr. McDougall's program, also very effective uh, in reversing uh, so many of these diseases. You know, if you're, uh, you, you want to avoid the heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, diabetes too has been uh, shown to be reversed through a vegan diet. So I will send you Dr. McDougall's book, The Starch Solution, along with the Cancer Survivor's Guide, the Cancer Survivor's Guide from the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, the Cancer Project, and uh, Eating Right for Cancer Survival, the video, all for a $100 donation at GoVeganRadio.com. Uh, again, the, the grills are all firing up today. It's, it's a plate of cancer. It's a plate of heart disease. Um, Fred, we have maybe another couple of minutes left. Uh, um, you know, I, uh, it's my station. I, I could do what I want. So uh. <laughs> That's right. It's your time. Um, and, but uh, so I, I just with, want with to... With a couple I, of minutes I, left, I, I wonder if you had any... Yeah. I just wanted to impress upon the listeners that this is a silent killer. And by the time you find out that you're sick, sometimes it can be too late. And uh, I was on the edge of the cliff when I discovered my problem. I had ignored it for too long. And what I'm suggesting to people is that they, uh, that they find out what their situation is. There's, with medical science now, they can take a look at your heart, find out what's blocked, what isn't. Uh, get a hold of Bob Linden. He can get you in touch with Dr. Esselstyn. I've got Dr. Esselstyn's uh, videos on the KCAA website, on the home page at kcaaradio.com. You can go on there and you can watch his video an hour and a half. He'll tell you more in an hour and a half than your medical doctor uh, who doesn't know nutrition will tell you probably in uh, a year's worth of visits and tens of thousands of dollars. Nothing against the medical profession. They save lives every day, but they don't know. They know very little about nutrition, and Dr. Esselstyn uh, is the place, and the Cleveland Clinic is the place to go if you want to save your life uh, uh, and, and, uh, and live a long life with heart disease. It can become a chronic ailment rather than a killing disease. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm so glad that you're enjoying the success of uh, going vegan, and uh, uh, we're we're all family now. So uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. What what, uh, what vegan specialties uh, have, have you had from that your daughter has made that you really like? What, oh, what she that? has made a vegan chili 
that is absolutely wonderful. She's made an omelet, a non-egg omelet, that I had this morning for Father's Day breakfast. It was absolutely delightful. Uh, she's made uh, all, well, just hamburgers that aren't made of ham. They're made of something <laughs> that tastes like a hamburger, but it's non-animal, and, and, uh, uh, and it's, it's uh, a soy-based and other components in it. We can have now chocolate almond milk, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I, uh, I, I believe it. I'm in, I'm in a Viva La Vegan grocery right now. You can have burgers, hot dogs, yogurt, ice cream, just all, all the comfort foods that, that you have had, and they're all, they're all vegan. As I love well as chocolate. I just visiting the produce section yeah. and uh, you know, all the, what do we have here? We have, uh, well, we have uh, Nature's Burger. Uh, we, <laughs> this Arlo's coming up here with a Loma Linda uh, veggie burger, and we have Loma Linda University, uh, Loma Linda here in the area, Seventh Day Adventists, who are uh, the vegans, uh, and also the health studies with them have shown uh, longevity, um, veggie burger, and yeah, and we have the garden burger, yeah. So, uh, yep, the vegan way is the way to go. Thank you, Fred. Lundgren for going vegan, and I'm so happy that you've gone from 327 pounds to 270, that your cholesterol in the 200s there is down to 162, so I suppose that this is a happy Father's Day for you. Yes, it is, Bob, and I want to thank you for inviting me on the program. I want to welcome you to KCAA uh, and the KCAA radio family, and uh, I want you to uh, 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 tell everybody Every time you're on the air of how important it is to go vegan, it can save your life. Yep. I've been saying that for years, and it actually works. And, you know, I I had a a hand injury not that long ago to where I had to be hospitalized. So, you know, all the numbers were great. I mean, it was like, oh, you know, blood pressure, pulse, blood sugar. uh, And, you know, the nurse said to me, oh, my cholesterol, everything was great. You know, and and the nurse said to me, wow, I wish I had your numbers. And I said, well, you can have my numbers. Just go vegan. And the nurse said, what, and give up my meat? You know, you're not giving up anything. You're you're saving your life. You're saving the animals and saving the planet. So uh, thanks for being with us today, Fred Lundgren. Thank you, Bob. And again, welcome to KCAA, the station that leaves no vegan behind. <laughs> Thank you. Nobody. Be, we don't leave any meat eaters behind, too. We give them the message. Uh, look, I ate meat every day of my life. Fred, former cattleman, you know, we ate meat every day. I won a hamburger eating contest when I was 16 years old. You know, I'm lucky to have survived that. And uh, so uh, the message is... Go Vegan. It's Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. My website is goveganradio.com. Uh, please make a donation. $100 or more, I'll send you the Starch Solution, the Cancer Survivor's Guide, and Eating Right for Cancer Survival. Give them to Dad. Go Vegan. <laughs>